Ciao. The Michael Medved Show. All across America. It's open, it's expansive, it's welcoming, it's filled with light. This is The Michael Medved Show. Now, my next guest is, um, uh, by several standards, an unlikely Republican. Why? Well, he's a college professor. Even more than that, he's a college administrator. Even more than that, he was a member of the Clinton administration. And did I mention he was African-American? Uh, the new book is called Jumping the Aisle, How I Became a Black Republican in the Age of Obama. The, uh, the author is uh, Dr. Oliver McGee. Uh, Dr. McGee, great to speak to you. Thank you for having me tonight, Michael. Well, it's a, it's a great pleasure. And um, we, um, uh, your, your book is fascinating and very timely because we are being told, in fact, there was one recent poll that came out that said that uh, there was absolutely zero. There were no black people in America. They had a poll and it showed zero percent black support for Mitt Romney in this election. Are you the only African-American in the country supporting Mitt Romney? <laughs> um, I was uh, talking with a young uh, man one day, and he uh, heard about my book, and he said, um, do you realize that um, um, you can't be found? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, I did not realize that. He said, well, you are simply a, a lost entity that— you, you you have to be discovered. <laughs> I said, uh, why is that? He says, you're a black Republican. <laughs> uh, I say that facetiously. No, there are quite a few uh, black Republicans. The National Association of Black Republicans is live and well and working hard every day to uh, uh, make sure that they're uh, advocating uh, the real true history of uh, the strength of black Republicans and also um, – this country has a strong history on helping um, the ideas of republicanism, particularly with regard to the black community. Uh, as I've recently said in a, a number of op venues, is that um, the Republican Party is, is, is the birth of affirmative action. Uh, the Republican Party is the birth of civil rights. Uh, in, uh, Senator Durst can help advise Johnson on uh, civil rights. And um, Art Fletcher, Fletcher uh, helped advise uh, Nixon on affirmative action. So there's a rich history that is uh, little known across uh, uh, the mainstream media and even discussed about the role of African Americans and republicanism. Which is one of the reasons that your book, Jumping the Aisle, is important. The book is listed up at our website at Michael Medved, M E D V as in Victory E D dot com. One of the points that I always make with people, and uh, it's it's part of my ebook, uh, is that even at the margins, you're talking about such a, a huge number of Americans that it really does matter. In other words, John McCain got about a million fewer black votes than did President George Walker Bush. Now, President Bush got eleven percent. Some. Uh, exit polls say 12 percent of the black vote. John McCain got only four percent of the black vote. But see, even that, when you're talking about such a huge group of, of our citizens, makes a very, very big difference. Uh, do you think uh, there is any chance that um, there may be more than four percent of black votes against Barack Obama this time? Yes. OK, now that's that's a good yes. We will come right back with Oliver McGee. He is the author of Jumping the Aisle, How I Became a Black Republican in the Age of Obama. How does one go from being a Clintonista, a member of the Clinton administration, and an official in the uh, Department of Transportation, a professor of mechanical engineering, an academic, uh, somebody who studied all over the world, what would lead somebody to dissociate himself from his traditional orientation within the Democratic Party and to become a black Republican in the age of Obama? We'll be right back with Dr. Oliver McGee coming right up at michaelmedved.com. So is information about our guest. His name is Dr. Oliver McGee. He is a professor of mechanical engineering at uh, uh, Howard University, and he is the author of Jumping the Aisle, how I Became a Black Republican in the Age of Obama. 
Uh, Dr. McGee, at the uh, Republican convention, Susana Martinez, the governor of New Mexico, described a lunch that she and her husband attended with a Republican friend of theirs. And she says, my husband and I came out of that lunch and uh, they all of a sudden looked at each other and said, well, I'll be damned. We're Republicans. How, when, when did it first occur to you that you might be more comfortable leaving uh, the, the party of, uh, of, of Bill Clinton and what has been assumed recently, but only recently, to be the natural home for African Americans? You know, um, I started looking at the stress uh, national income early on in the 2007 campaign on to 2008. And that issue resonated with me. I went to Wharton in Chicago, and I like to say that Wharton Chicago made me right, the conservative business schools. And when you start looking at uh, the numbers that are coming down from the government with regard to Social Security, Medicare, and trust funds, and and and, and, and being able to, to keep things uh, flowing in so far as they're moving into uh, increased stress for the entitlement age, um, there's just not enough money to go around, Michael. Uh, mounting debt, overreaching government intrusion, rising taxes, taxes in a struggling, weakening economy, and, and muddle forward policy unfolding now on TV on fire. Uh, this made me question where we're going as a country, and are we going towards the belief of America or towards a disbelief in America? And that made me stand, at, stand up and, uh, uh, some may say, stand up and shout. Uh, I can't shout very loud, so I just decided to write. Oh. Well, I, well I, I think that uh, your your book obviously makes a contribution to the national debate. The book is called Jumping the Aisle, and it's uh, posted up uh, at our website at michaelmedved.com. Um, when, uh, were you ever taken up with the enthusiastic admiration of the current president of the United States? Well, I thought that he was a historical figure, like most presidents are. The institution of a presidency is a historic uh, um, institution. So what he represented at the time in 2008 was a very, very strong emotional vote of the heart. And African Americans are, are very, very true to the heart. We look at the head issues, but that particular moment, I can understand why African-American voters were anxious to make that history, like most of what African-Americans have done. But when I came to look further, understanding the perceptions of our money and our votes and our jobs and our power were key to understanding the perceptions of black Americans and in abridging the economic divide between the haves and the have not, and on the left and on the right. And when you look at we as a people, as African-American people, we're very good at knocking down walls between us versus them. But I was questioning in the book, are we good as a people at getting great at building up stronger structures of sounder institutions of churches, families, and schools, and our businesses, and even in our charitable contributions outside of, the, outside of just government? Did, so we just really rest in our loyalty and the trust. And then and African Americans have proven over the history that we're loyal to the trust. But really when we look at the com- country's stressed income and uh, how we fare in that, black Americans are twice as stressed when the country is stressed under its income. Well, there's there's no doubt. Now, you mentioned churches here. There are lots of uh, people who are very involved in the black church who were deeply offended when President Obama seemingly trivialized the whole civil rights movement and its achievements by comparing the struggle for equal rights uh, of the black community against segregation and against Jim Crow and discrimination, comparing that to the drive to redefine marriage. Did you also share that, that distaste? That is um, a strategy going towards the small, small issues inside the big issues. The big issues that the black church is facing, which is not only moral issues, which they will stand up and fight for that and should, should, should do so. But we can't get distracted uh, with the smaller issues 
uh, away from the bigger issues, is what is the role of the church and the government? And what is, how is the church going to function as a sound institution in the black community in regards to when we have more spending than less, more regulation than less, more welfare than less? How is the church going to address that issue? And, and more productive power than less, or more taxes than less. Churches don't necessarily pay taxes, but the parishioners at the, at the, at the pews do. And so if you're raising taxes and tax burdens on folks who are working hard, that's going to be a problem. And if you are not working hard and not paying taxes, then who's going to pay the taxes for the holdouts and the handouts that may happen uh, in that struggle between the discussion that's going on in this institution? Well, well, part of what you're talking about is the struggle between whether you worship the big G, God, or you worship the little g, government which can crowd out a lot of the space for God or anything else. We'll continue the conversation with Dr. Oliver McGee of Howard University. His new book is called Jumping the Aisle, How I Became a Black Republican in the Age of Obama. And on the Michael Medved Show, 55 minutes past the hour, uh, it's worth noting that for the first time since Reconstruction, there are two, that's right, two black members of the United States House of Representatives, both of them very strong conservatives, uh, Congressman Alan West of Florida, Congressman Tim Scott of South Carolina. Uh, There's also Arthur Davis, former four-term Democratic congressman from Alabama, who has shifted over dramatically to the Republican Party. And together with them, uh, Dr. Oliver McGee, he is a mechanical engineering professor. He studied all over the world at the most distinguished academic institutions on this planet. He is also the author of the new book, Jumping the Aisle, How I Became a Black Republican in the Age of Obama. I know, Dr. McGee, in, in the brief time we have remaining to us, a lot of people would immediately think somebody like you, you were an advisor to Bill Clinton, your former U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Transportation, has have you suffered any uh, consequences either in your career or your personal life from uh, emerging as a black Republican? Uh, fortunately, so far, no. And fortunately for America, I hope uh, I hope so, no. That would be uh, contrary to what this book is about, which is a belief in America. And this book is about um, uh, what I call the four R's for America, revolutionizing in 1776, reorganizing the nation in 1876, reinventing the country in its bicentennial 1976, on to renewing America in 2076. That's where I end the book at, reaching forward to the future. If someone's going to uh, uh, kind of take it in that negative vein, that's away from the future vision to where the country wants to go, which is always America is extraordinary, Americans are good, America works. And I'm standing in the gap with this position because I believe in those core principles. Uh, the country is center-right, always has been, always will be, Michael. And people are feeling more free to jump the aisle and to look at uh, different issues, the big issues, uh, on, and, and then shaping their political tastes and styles as they change. And, and, and how we can, uh, as a people, remain relevant in those styles and changes in taste is really key to who is at the policymaking table to shape the issues that are going to be faced for our children and our children's grandchildren going to 2076. Well, you... That's what I wanted to write about that, because all the times when we're looking at today's issues, the country seems to be in a stress debate, uh, really, really discussing about every minor issue, and the voters are confused in the middle. Uh, the, uh, the Obama 47 and the Romney 47, they're pretty entrenched. But the 5 to 6 percent in the middle and the independents who are really, really thoughtful looking at the issues are really confused by the noise. And that's one of the reasons that they will benefit from jumping the aisle, how I became a black Republican in the age of Obama. It's uh, entitled Volume Number 1, Essays. It is full of graphs, historical examples, and provocation. Dr. Oliver McGee, thank you for your contributions to this greatest nation on God's green earth.